What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're talking all about lung volumes and capacities, a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but we have to. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so as I say, we're talking all about lung volumes and capacities. Now, uh, we're gonna jump into this, and before we start overcomplicating things, just going to make it simple. Okay. We don't, we don't want this to be hard. It was already hard the first time you tried to learn it or, or maybe you're just now learning it. But the thing is, is that you got to understand these things because I'm going to show you where everything we do can be tied back to lung volumes and capacities. And so, um, what we know is, is that there are four volumes and there are four capacities. Now, for right now, we're just going to focus on the volume side of things, okay? So there's four volumes, and those four volumes are I always like to start with tidal volume, okay? So tidal volume goes right here. Now, you, you'll commonly see this referred to as VT. So that's that. there's that. Now, tidal volume is us breathing normally. You're doing it right now. You are taking normal breaths in, exhaling those volumes back out. And this is just a normal resting amount of volume that you breathe in of um, several times every single minute. Now, what we know is, is that on top of those normal volumes, we can take in more volume. So if I breathe in, that's a tidal volume. And then I breathe in as deep as I can. That is my inspiratory reserve volume. You see, it means it's an amount of inspiratory volume that can be taken on top of a tidal volume that is extra volume that we have to utilize. So this is IRV. That's short for inspiratory reserve volume. Now, I can take that in and I can, I can take that deep breath in and I have gone up to IRV. Now, I can exhale back to my normal resting tidal volume, and that's where I'll be. Or I can exhale even further. You see, when I'm breathing right here normally, I can breathe normal. But then I can push out more air. So I'm going to breathe in normal and then push out all of my air that I can. You see, I just blew out even more air than what I'm normally breathing on top of. This is what we call expiratory reserve volume. So we breathe at tidal volume. There's more we can inhale. That's our inspiratory reserve volume. The word reserve, what does it mean? It means it's there if you need it. So we have reserve inspiratory volume. We also have volume that we can exhale out in cases where we need to for expiratory reserve volume. And then there's one volume that kind of stands out to be unique. That is residual volume. Residual volume, RV. Now residual volume, you notice it didn't say reserve because we have an inspiratory reserve if we need it. And we have an expiratory reserve if we need it but we always have a little bit left over that's the word residual you see we can never fully exhale all of the gas out of our lungs that amount is what we call residual volume now notice this here there's four volumes and every single one of them has volume in the name inspiratory reserve volume tidal volume expiratory reserve volume and then the little bit that's left over that we can never fully exhale is residual volume okay now remember there's four of them that's all you have to remember there's four volumes irv vt erv and rv those are your four volumes now what we need to understand is that when we start talking about capacities you see it gets a little trickier because we know that a capacity is two or more volumes. I'm going to say that again. A capacity is comprised of two or more volumes. So if we go back and we label our volumes here, there's four volumes, IRV, VT, 
ERV and RV, those are our four volumes. They are going to make up four different capacities. Now, we're going to break those capacities down. Now, just think about it like this. There, is, there are two phases to the inspiratory breath phase. There's an inspiratory phase and there's an expiratory phase. So when we think about that, we can kind of break this down. When we think of tidal volume, it's the normal amount of volume that we breathe in at a resting state. And then we have a reserve volume that we can take in higher to. This is all on inspiration. This makes up our IC, our inspiratory capacity. Interesting, right? Oh, that's just the inspiratory side of things because these are our inspiratory volumes. Now, remember, we can blow out below tidal volume and we can go blow out into ERV and to RV, but we have to actively exhale ERV. We don't typically blow out all of the gas throughout, throughout ERV. So what does that mean? That means that tidal volume is happening on top of ERV and RV. These are our expiratory, our baseline volumes that stay within our gas. You see, this gas keeps our alveoli open and functional. So that's where we see this term right here. FRC, that's functional residual capacity. Now say that again, functional residual capacity. What does that say? That means this is the capacity of these two expiratory volumes that keeps gas within our alveoli functional to be ready to allow us to breathe on top of FRC. That's what it is. So IRV and tidal volume make up inspiratory capacity. Our baseline volume that we can blow some of out, but not all of it, ERV and RV make up our functional residual capacity. Now, those are just two capacities. We've got two more to go, right? But those are two capacities that we've identified. All right. So we come back here. We know we have IRV. We have tidal volume, ERV, and RV. Okay, these are our volumes. There is a capacity that is made up of three of our volumes, okay? And so, well, what would that be? Well, this is what we call VC, also known, and that stands for vital capacity. Now, what is vital capacity, Joe? Well, vital capacity is if we're breathing normally here at tidal volume and we breathe in as deep as we can to IRV and then blow it all the way back out until we can't blow out anymore, you see, the three of these together equal vital capacity. Now, what did we say about residual volume? It can never be fully exhaled. And so residual volume does not belong in vital capacity. You see, you can move this over and say, okay, well, so, so in other words, vital capacity is the total lung volume minus RV. That's exactly right because that's not in this. We can't blow out our RV. We can't fully excel, exhale that. And so we can breathe up to IRV and then out to ERV. This is vital capacity. Now we've talked about three of them. We got one more to talk about. Let's jump into it. Now, look at this one. See, this box is equal to all of the other four boxes. So, what does that tell us? Well, this is IRV, this is tidal volume, this is ERV, and this is residual volume. If you add up all of these together and you totaled them together, you would get a total lung capacity. And that's what this represents. TLC, total lung capacity. Now, for your emphysematic patients, these get larger because your total your TLC increases because of hyperinflation. For your for your restrictive lung diseases such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, you see they lose lung volume, and so their TLC will be smaller. You see, TLC encompasses all of these. 
Now, you can measure TLC, but you have to do it through a pulmonary function test. You can't exhale fully all of your lung volume. We've already established that. If you take in a big deep breath and blow it all the way out until you can't blow out anymore, we can measure how much that is. But guess what? That is vital capacity. So we have to do deeper testing to be able to assess TLC because it includes RV, residual volume. All right, let's put all this together and see what we're talking about here. Now, remember, this is IRV. This is tidal volume. This is ERV. And this is RV. Remember, this is an expiratory reserve. This is an inspiratory reserve. This is where we normally breathe. Okay? Our inspiratory max, our inspiratory capacity is made up by IRV and tidal volume. Our expiratory base for where we breathe on top of is FRC, functional residual capacity. Again, if we breathe all the way in and blow it all the way out, this is vital capacity. And then if we use special pulmonary function testing to assess lung volumes, we can indeed assess and calculate total lung capacity, which is compromises all four of these lung volumes. Now you may be thinking to yourself, okay, that's great, but how do I use this at the bedside, right? That's what I always ask. I said, okay, well, that's fantastic, but what do I do with this information? Well, here's what we do. We realize that a lot of things we do are rooted back to lung volumes and capacities. For example, when we do an incentive spirometer, or when we have a patient or ask them to cough, you have to be able to take a deep breath, right? If you're doing an IS or you're trying to take a deep breath to cough, guess what? We're talking about inspiratory capacity. You see, you can't cough effectively at tidal volume. You have to be able to breathe up all the way to IRV and then forcefully exhale it. So you see, deep breathing and coughing talks about inspiratory capacity. Now, we know that we can aid oxygenation and we can recruit more alveoli. Why would we want to recruit more alveoli? Oh, perhaps because a patient is atelectatic. Perhaps they have a post-operative atelectasis and we're doing recruitment therapy on them. Perhaps you have a patient on the ventilator and you look at their, their chest x-ray and they are hypoinflated. You see, we need to help increase the amount of functional alveoli. We can do that by increasing PEEP. You see, now we're talking about FRC. Not only are we talking about aiding oxygenation, but you remember what FRC is? FRC is the foundation for which tidal volume happens on top of. So we understand that when we're increasing PEEP or CPAP or EPAP, expiratory positive airway pressure, or we're doing uh, anything that recruits more alveoli, we're looking to increase FRC. Now, we also assess various parameters when we are looking to get a patient off of and liberate them from mechanical ventilation. One of those things we do is assess vital capacity. Just give us an inclination of what your vital capacity is. You have this patient, you ask this patient, during mechanical ventilation in the weaning process, you say, hey, do me a favor. Breathe in for me as deep as you can, all the way in, all the way in. Now blow it all the way out. Out, 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 out. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. And you look at that number on the vent. And what you just did was a vital capacity. Because if that vital capacity is impaired, then there is a good risk that their TLC is impaired and that this patient does not have the lung volumes or capacities to take care of and to, 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 to resume spontaneous uh, ventilation. That's lung volumes and capacities. It's, uh, it's very interesting when you dive into it and when you understand what they are telling you, it, uh, it feels like to me, at least it makes more sense. Now, here's our summary. There are four volumes. You gotta remember what they are. IRV, tidal volume, ERV, and residual volume being RV. Those are your four volumes. Now, there are also four capacities. Capacities are made up by two or more lung volumes. So we have inspiratory capacity. 
We have functional residual capacity. We have vital capacity and we have total lung capacity. And finally, be the expert. Keep these things in mind. Review these things occasionally because this is what makes you a unique uh, part of the healthcare team. It's what makes you the cardiopulmonary expert that you are that most people don't understand. So carry that with you and keep that in mind. Hey, I want to tell you about something really cool over here. If you look in the video description below, you will find a link that will bring you to this page. And when you get to this page, you can sign up for my free respiratory coach resources cheat sheets. I've got things like waveform analysis. I've got a quiz in there of one of the YouTube videos. I've got all kinds of stuff in there and ICU checklist for people starting uh, their ICU rotations. Go check it out. It's completely free. If you are looking to pass that TMC for the first time or maybe the second or the third, don't quit. But I've got a review course for you that I promise you, you will benefit from. You'll find it right here, the TMC bootcamp, as well as the clinical simulation bootcamp. Go check those out if you're looking to prepare for and knock that those, those board exams out of the way. And then I also have an arterial blood gas and a respiratory therapy pharmacology course that I would love for you to check out if you're interested in either one of those two. And stay on the lookout for a pulmonary function course coming very, very soon. So that's lung volumes and capacities. I'm Respiratory Coach. You can find me here on YouTube, which you are here. Hit the like, the subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback on this video. I'm also on Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, and over on LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. Come join me over on LinkedIn. There's a lot of good professional networking happening over there. Pretty good little site there. And then finally, send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I'd love to get your questions, um, help and aid you along your journey as you progress through to become a respiratory therapist. Perhaps you're already one and uh, you just want to have a conversation about either this video or any other topic related to respiratory therapy. Hey, remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.